Hey, 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 this is part two to the last video that I was talking about. I guess I'll probably name this video Leave Me Alone, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, so to pick up where I left off, um, I was talking about like how a lot of people, um, how abusers, they use, you know, guilt trips. Um, and, you know, they'll basically, basically they instill fear and they cause you guilt, shame, things like that. And when you feel those emotions, you want to silence yourself. You don't you want to speak up and, you know, speak your truth. You're afraid or whatever. And for me, I have essentially started my YouTube platform to as a way to fight against domestic violence. I told y'all domestic violence is verbal abuse. It can be physical abuse. It's also emotional abuse, psychological abuse, and it can be financial abuse as well as spiritual abuse. Abuse goes deeper than having a black eye, bruises, and some broken bones. You know what I'm saying? It goes beyond that. And when I talk about narcissists or narcissism, even sociopaths, psychopaths, um, things of this nature, it's because I have lived with these people. And as an adult, you know, it's amazing that they fucking exist. You know what I'm saying? Because, And I say that because when you think of movies with psychopaths and sociopaths, that is how they want the psychopaths and sociopaths to be viewed. But that's not a psychopath. And that's not a sociopath. Not like you see on TV. No, 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 no. Those are lies. Psychopaths, sociopaths, as well as narcissists can be very covert, very subtle, silent, sneaky devious you know what i'm saying and most victims or most targets or people who are not you know um aware of these people you know what i'm saying because when you think of the average person not to attend thinks of a psychopath or a sociopath is like a murderer serial murderer um Something like that, right? Now, it's very possible for them to be like that, yes. But they abuse people in other ways. If you manage to get into a marriage with one of these people or a relationship with one of these people, trust me, you are losing your life force in every way possible. Your finances, uh, you know, when you were single, your finances was good and straight. Now you get with these motherfuckers, you're always broke. You know, um... When you, you know, you start kind of feeling like you tripping and losing your mind because, you know, they didn't say it or they said X, Y, Z, they did X, Y, Z. And then when you be like, hey, you did X, Y, Z. No, I didn't. I did A, B, C. You know, they want to gaslight you and shit. So now you get to questioning and doubting yourself like, but I, I thought, don't second guess yourself. You know what the fuck happened. You're not remembering things right. How you going to tell me what the fuck I remember? I don't remember that happening. I don't recall that happening. Because let me tell you, when these people go, especially narcissists anyway, when they go into like narcissistic rage, they do black out. They black out and they don't remember what the fuck they did. I remember my mom beating the fuck out of my brother. You know, I was like six years old. He's 11 years older than me. So he was like 17, 18. She would beat the fuck out of him. Take statues, telephone, anything, rock, anything. When I say anything that she could get her hands on. And all I got to say is my oldest brother has the strongest head, the strongest neck, and the strongest back I have ever seen. Because for her to take a bat and break it over him... Uh, stone statues, vases. Uh, y'all remember the old ass, the first, first wireless phones that came out with the antenna? She broke one of them motherfuckers over his head. I was like, God damn, why are you beating this young man like this? There is no reason why you are so goddamn angry that you need to be abusing your child like this. And you know what? I see why he himself is a narcissist and he's toxic and he hates women. You know, he hates me because I call him out on his pedophilia. You know what I'm saying? You know, when I called him out for, you know, molesting me as a kid, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, he was all mad, went into a narcissistic rage and, oh, I'm gonna beat your ass if I ever see you. I'm gonna kill you and da, 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 da. Now you was just saying, I love you, sis. Now that I'm speaking some truth and making you and her confront the truth. Now it's like, oh, um, I'm not what you think I am, bitch. Yes, yes, y'all both are. If you're not a true pedophile, why did you do prison time for 10 years? You know? There's too much evidence and, and they love to be pulling the Bible. Well, the Bible says um, that where two or more are gathered, you know, to come against somebody, are they all lying? You know, so if me, my cousin, childhood friends and other people all can testify that my brother is a fucking molester and pedophile, then, sir, that is what the fuck you are. It is what you are. And am I going to sit there and fault myself on some shit that happened under my guardian narcissistic mother no the bitch had me surrounded by fucking pedophiles fucking rapists and child abusers molesters or whatever cps should have came and took my ass away permanently in all honesty you know what i'm saying i, I would have i would have been better off in a fucking group home or foster care than under her care and honestly that would have never happened because if when would have got to my dad my dad fought for me for 10 years if he never gave a fuck about me why would he fight your psychotic ass that fucking long so she could talk mad shit she's mad that i'm getting to know my dad's side of the family and all that shit you're just mad because all your lies are coming to light you're just mad you know and then when i think about it it's best to get away from these toxic people, guys, because they cost you more than just your financial health. They cost you your physical health. You know, my nervous system was under constant distress because I was walking on eggshells and I never knew what mood my mom was going to be in. I never knew what I would say, whether it, whether it would set her off. You know what I'm saying? I never knew what to say what to do or whatever you know and so i my my nervous system was always in constant overdrive um i'm surprised that my fucking adrenal glands are in great i am surprised that i am in tip-top shape and health out of all the times that i did go to a doctor and they took my blood pressure it is amazing how my blood pressure was never sky high with all this stress and anxiety that she caused me i have uterine fibroids because of her because of like my brother because when they fuck with you you know what i'm saying this is why i like a lot of people um one young lady and, th and this is why i'm even talking about this because a young lady had messaged me and basically you know told me about how her uh her oldest brother molested raped her and all this shit and tries to play like the shit never happened and i told her i was like look you know your reality this is a toxic person and clearly your mother you know because she went into detail like how they were raised and stuff like that and you got to remember if the mother ain't shit and she's a toxic bitch Imagine how she's raising the son. I just told y'all at the beginning of this video how the fuck my mama beat the fuck out of my brother. So now my brother harbors hatred against women because of how our mother beat him and abused him. But he was so weak that instead of just going to seek therapy and get help, he decided to become a fucking toxic ass narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, whatever the fuck is wrong with him, just like her. You know what I'm saying? And... I mean, I forgive him for what he did to me. It's up to my cousin to forgive him for what he did to her. It's up to my childhood friends to forgive him for what he did to them. But like I told him, I said, victims are always going to remember what you did. You don't have to remember. They do. You know what I'm saying? It's no different than being bullied in school. And then when you become an adult and then you see that bully and you and you're doing a you're doing a success you know you're living a successful life and that bully is a drunk or a fucking uh drug addict or whatever and then they ask you for some spare change and you're like no nah, fuck you you bullied me in school but you know you go you go you have a flashback and go down memory lane and then that bully is like man look i'm sorry i apologize we were kids blah 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 xyz 
You know what I'm saying? They legit do not remember the shit that they do. But people remember how you make them feel. You know what I'm saying? I will always remember how my mom made me feel. Now, do I harbor feelings of hatred and resentment towards her? No. I forgave her for myself to open up my heart space so that I can continue living a loving, compassionate life because that's who I am. I don't regret the love that I gave her. I don't regret loving my older brother. I don't regret loving anybody that I cared about. But will I remove your ass out of my life? Hell yeah. For my sanity's sake, for my peace of mind, for my joy, for my financial stability and anything else. Yes, I will remove you. And that's what a lot of people have to get and build the strength up to. And that's why in, you know... Me talking about the shit that I talk about on my fucking platform. Because it's my channel. You ain't got to tune into this shit. You really truly don't. But I'm speaking on behalf of those who've gone through narcissistic abuse. As well as just domestic violence. I don't play that shit. And you shouldn't play that shit either. Don't let somebody, you know, down talk you and disrespect you. You know what I'm saying? If they show you. If they if they think that they could talk to you any kind of way. They, they're going to continue to do that. You know, and I believe that I've come a long way because I've been my own goddamn psychologist. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had people help me along the way because, you know, when I was trying to figure out, I thought my mom for the longest was bipolar or schizophrenic. And, you know, I would sit there and just talk to people about my mom and how she acts and how she talks to me. And everybody came to the same conclusion. She's jealous of you. And I couldn't wrap my head around it like, my mom? Jealous of me? My mom? In competition with me? But it makes perfect sense. Because why are you worried about the fact that I got booty and you don't? Why are you worried about me having um, perky boobs but you got, you you know, your titties hanging down low like Miss Chocolate Dick or whatever the fuck her name is on South Park? Y'all know the teacher with them long ass titties and when she raised her shirt up, they could see her nipples or some shit. Miss Chokesome Dick, I think is her name or some shit. That shit is funny. That's why I made that little uh, short clip, orangutan titties. Don't be mad at me because gravity done took your shit over. Hell, you should be lucky that you ain't, you ain't got breast cancer and they ain't chopped them bitches off. But, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to mention that's why you need to get rid of toxic people because toxic people will create problems. You know, when I was a teenager, my hair started falling out. It was falling out in droves, you know, and it was falling out because I was under so much stress. I, I had a lot of anxiety, you know, things of that nature. And what else? You know, I wouldn't say I had IBS, but. You know, when my stomach would hurt, my stomach would hurt. You know, um, my appetite was always affected. Either I would overeat or I wouldn't eat at all. You know what I'm saying? My weight was up and down. Um, I would get migraines or headaches, which is not normal for me. Cause, but, you know, dealing with toxic people, they cause that. They cause your nervous system to get out of whack. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, they can cause you uterine fibroids or, you know, reproductive issues. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people who undergo sexual trauma also experience um, reproductive issues. You know what I'm saying? And I say that because um, a lot of young women, you know, who've come to me, you know, and express their stories because they didn't see a video I didn't made on Facebook or they didn't see my YouTube or, or we didn't have a conversation in public or whatever. Their experiences, they also deal with uterine fibroids or PCOS or um, intrometriosis and all this other shit, right? It doesn't come just from the GMO foods that they're using to try to kill your ass. It also comes from the stress and toxicity of somebody in your life. You know what I'm saying? I used to have a twitch in my eye where it was just an uncontrollable twitch. And since I've been away from my mom and I've cut a lot of toxic people out of my fucking life, I don't have a twitch anymore. You know, it. I, I wouldn't even be able to do it, but it'd be like, 
the corner of my eye would just start twitching like crazy. It was almost like, um, I don't know, like a, I can't even describe it. Um, but anyways, like I used to have a twitch, you know what I'm saying? Um, I used to actually pull my eyelashes out. Um, and that's actual a real condition, by the way. I forgot what the fuck it's called, but you can Google it. Cause I Google, why do I keep pulling my eyelash hair out? And it's a real condition. And I had it for a, for a certain amount of time. And then my cousin put me on to getting lashes. I was like, ooh, my eyes is popping with these fucking lashes. And I got a little addicted to them playing with my eyelashes. I'm like, if I'm going to be spending $80 to $100 on these lashes, I need to leave my eyelashes the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to be pulling at them. You know what I'm saying? So that was like my way of providing an incentive to myself to stop fucking with my eyelashes. So once I stopped getting the eyelashes, you know what I'm saying? I found this eyelash serum uh, in like a metaphysical store or whatever. And it has like all the, all the vitamins, all the natural vitamins that your hair needs. Because your hair, any type of hair on your body needs vitamins to or biotin to be strong and healthy, right? So almost like I'm putting on, you know, mascara. You know, I, I was putting that on every single day. My lash, my eyelash hair is the longest it has ever freaking been. Like, usually sections of my eyelashes would be missing because I would have pulled, pulled out every single fucking hair. Because it's like I was addicted to, like, the pain because it felt good, but it hurt at the same time, which is weird. But it was like an addiction where I would keep doing it. And I had to wean myself from stop doing it. And I feel like the only reason why I ever did it, stop, was um to uh, cope with whatever I was dealing with. But see, on a subconscious level, I didn't understand what I was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And I can tell you this. Being away from like my mom, my hair is gorgeous. My hair is the strongest most it has a lot of volume thickness to it it's soft uh i would actually compare my hair as an adult to a baby fresh out the womb that is how soft my hair is and it is it is amazing you know what i'm saying um i cut it it's growing back in an amazing way um and my hair stylist she helps a lot cuz she takes care of my hair my crown and um you know what I'm saying? What else do these people do? You know, they cause, if you, well, I noticed with me, uh, I would say heart palpitations because every time my mom would call me and her name would pop up on my phone, my heart would start racing. You know what I'm saying? And I couldn't control it. And then I had to just one day tell myself, hey, ignore the call. You know, this is your cell phone. You ain't got to answer the phone for her. She don't pay your cell phone bill. She don't want nothing important anyway. All she going to try to do is start an argument and get on your fucking nerves because she herself cannot regulate her emotions. And you don't need her toxicity. You don't need her anger, her, you know, sadness or whatever fucking mood she's in. You don't need that. You don't. So I began to help myself, you know, regulate myself so i would you know begin to work on my breathing things of that nature to control my heart and regulate it get it back to normal you know what i'm saying i'm telling you these people they cause a lot of health issues you know arthritis diabetes you know high blood pressure um ibs uh they're they're it, it depends on the person in their body Everybody reacts to abuse in a different way. And one thing you have to realize is when you're being emotionally uh, provoked, taunted, and um, abused, if you are not able to express, you know, what you're dealing with and what you're going through, it's going to manifest into a physical illness or ailment of some sort. Either way, it's going to be expressed because... You know, um, I remember when I was younger, I used to have a lot of chest problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, if the teacher made us run a lap, my chest would start hurting and shit like that. 
My mom took me to a heart specialist. That's fucking surprising. I'm surprised she didn't let me fucking die. Um, but anyway, she took me to a heart doctor or whatever. They did all their tests and they were like, her heart is fine. It's regular. Heartbeat's good. You know, everything is fine. So we don't understand. Maybe she's just overexerting herself. No, I wasn't overexerting myself. I was being abused to where um, my rib cage would hurt or my chest would hurt. The only way I could describe it is sometimes I would get these sharp pains. You know what I'm saying? I know, Negan. I know. Um, <laughs> I guess he could sense how I'm feeling or whatever. Um, I would get these sharp pains and then or sometimes it would feel like my ribs is closing in on my lungs that sometimes I would hold my breath and stuff like that. Like these people really, truly cause a lot of problems and issues. And I have to say little Negan here, he ain't so little no more. My little six year old big boy. He got me through a lot. I would definitely call him my emotional support animal because one thing about pets, they can tune into your emotions. You know, he knows how I be feeling. Even though I be yelling at him and puff sometimes because they be doing, they be on kitty crack running around here like crackheads and stuff, climbing up walls and all types of nonsense. I'd I be like, if y'all don't sit down, <laughs> my baby. But yeah, this little guy. He definitely helped me get through a lot of my emotional trauma. So I would, I'm not advising you to get a cat, but get a pet, a bird, lizard, snake, dog. I don't know, adopt a raccoon outside, a rabbit, you know, find an animal that, you know, you can love. Cause trust me, that animal is going to be loyal to you and love you. Stop Negan. My nails don't need to be cleaned by you. You know, as you can see. He be licking me. I He's the first. That's why I got him. He's the first cat that I've ever had that licks you. And I was like, well, that shows he's loyal, which he is. Because there's not many people that he that he approves of or likes, which is funny. But yeah. But anyways, y'all. Seriously. So I don't know if uh whoever might need to hear this or whatever. But I made this video just because of the couple of messages that I've gotten or whatever. And I don't mind using my life experiences because my life experiences are my life experiences. I do not have any guilt, fear or shame. You know, God, my my experiences are nothing more than testimonies. OK, you know, if I've survived and I'm doing good for myself, <laughs> what makes you think you won't survive and do good for yourself? You know what I'm saying? And this is part of the reason why, you know, I want to actually get into life coaching because I help a lot of people and I never even realized it. So thank you, you guys, for messaging me. You know, it's an honor that you could even share uh, such sensitive, like intimate topics and stuff like that. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? That 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 takes a lot to be vulnerable and open with a complete stranger but maybe y'all don't feel that I'm a stranger because you've watched my videos so you feel like you know me which is fine but I'm just speak I, I can't really speak on anybody else's experience only mine but I advocate stay away from toxic abusive people stay away from them when you realize that they are they show you who they are believe them and get out get out all right y'all like share subscribe until next time peace out y'all